everyone! This is a video tutorial on the Beckman rearrangement mechanism for converting an oxime to an amide. So if we take a look at the board over here, we have the mechanism laid out and we're just going to talk about it step by step. So over here we have our oxime that we're starting out with. This oxime was derived from a ketone. If you're unsure how that reaction would take place, there is a video that discusses that. So over here, what we're going to see is we need to make this into a good leaving group. Typically, the way we make things into good leaving groups is by protonating them. So an acid is going to be required in this particular part of the mechanism. So over here, we're going to be using sulfuric acid, and we're going to use the H over here to protonate our OH group. So over here now we have an OH2+, which is a very, very good leaving group. Now this step I think might be the trickiest step. What's going to happen in this case is a ring opening. So what we're going to do is, I've numbered the ring from 1 to 7. So 1 being the nitrogen, which will be part of the ring. So we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So what's going to happen here is we want to kick this leaving group off. The way we're going to do that is we're going to take this bond between 7 and 2 and we're going to shift it so instead of 7 and 2, we're now bonding between 7 and 1. And when that bond is shifted over, we are then able to kick off the water group. So if you take a look over here, I've kept the numbering identical, so still 1 and then we're going around clockwise. So you'll see here, between 1 and 2, there is still a double bond and now there's a new bond formed between 1 and 7, which is shown right here. What is going to form in this part is a carbocation, because remember, when 7 takes its electrons, it's no longer sharing them with 2, it's now shifted it to sharing with 1, which means 2 just lost electrons. That loss of electrons causes it to form a carbocation, and that carbocation is a perfect attack point. So now in the next step here, now that we've kicked off the H2O, our H2O is going to act as a really good nucleophile because of that carbocation sitting there. So over here, the oxygen with its lone pairs will come and attack that carbon position. There are no needs to break any bonds because that carbon has three bonds, not four, which is why it has the positive charge sitting on it. So what we're going to see now is we form this group over here where we've attached our water to that carbon position right there. Now this positive charge is on the O, not the C, because this oxygen here has three bonds, so its formal charge is a plus one. So the carbon lost the positive charge because it got its fourth bond. The oxygen now has gained the positive charge because it has too many bonds. It's sharing more electrons than it would like to. So what we're going to want to do then is to get rid of that positive charge on the O, and the way we'll do that is by deprotonating. So I'm just going to use the term B for base, just some generic base, we're not specifying which one in the solution. We'll come and deprotonate this oxygen, giving those electrons in that bond over to the O as a lone pair. So now we have a neutral situation happening. So in this case, what we formed is amidic acid. Amidic acid is a tautomer of an amide, and the amide is going to be the more stable form of the tautomer. So I've got these double way arrows just to represent that there is an equilibrium. However, our equilibrium is going to favor ultimately our final product that we have. So what happens in this tautomerization is the oxygen is going to push down its electrons to form the carbonyl double bond. When that happens, this carbon would have too many bonds, so we need to get rid of that pi. Now instead of just dumping those electrons on the nitrogen, because we don't want to form a negative charge in an acidic solution. In an acidic solution you can only have positive or neutral charges. In a basic solution you can only have negatives or neutral charges. So over here what's going to happen is, this pi bond is going to come up, pick up that hydrogen from the base that was used previously to remove it from the um, oxygen, and we have a proton transfer occur. So now we're going to have this O and this N, where the double bond is now between the C and the O, making a carbonyl. The last thing that has to happen, as always, get rid of whatever formal charges you have, if you are able to. We have our generic base again in solution. That base is going to come remove the hydrogen on our oxygen, and we have our amide as our final answer. And that's what the mechanism looks like using the Beckman rearrangement to convert from an oxime to an amide.